it's Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. Well, Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, has been going with Philip Boynton, Madison's biologist, for many years now. And as far as she is concerned, the sun rises and Guns. sets on him. The sun rises and sets on him, all right. But for the bulk of the day, our relationship is strictly for the birds. Of course, there have been some rays of hope recently. For instance, last weekend was his parents' 35th wedding anniversary. And knowing his mother's influence on Mr. Boynton, I wanted to go to Cedarville with him to help them celebrate. His mother had hinted two months ago that she wanted me to come, but Mr. Boynton hadn't mentioned it since. Nevertheless, on Friday morning, direct invitation or not, I was all set to go. I even had $30 of the $40 I'd need for plane fare there and back. At breakfast, I discussed the problem of raising the balance with my landlady. $10 isn't an insurmountable obstacle. Tommy. But it may take a little time to dig up. Well, I don't have any time, Mrs. Davis. I've got to get the invitation from Mr. Boynton, plus the $10 I need for the plane fare today. Have you any idea where I might borrow the money? I think I hear the doorbell, dear. <laughs> you always hear it when I need money. But I wasn't thinking of borrowing from you, Mrs. Davis. All I wanted was a suggestion as to how I could handle my double dilemma. Well, dear, there is a way to handle the situation. You've got to appeal to people's sentimental side. Everybody has one, you know. And when it's appealed to properly, they'll do practically anything for you. Take me, for instance. I'm a pushover for the reminiscing approach. The reminiscing approach? Yes. Mm -hmm. With me, you might talk about the day you first came here to rent a room. Do you remember that day? Oh, I certainly do. I was wearing a brown dress with two green stripes down the back. Green stripes? That was from the park bench I'd been sleeping on. <laughs> Yes, I remember that day distinctly. It was early in the fall of 1947. I had seen your ad in the paper, and it seemed like just the sort of a place I... Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I'm here about your ad in the paper. Wonderful. Where did you find my cat? <laughs> your cat? Oh, I'm here about your room. Oh, I have lost the room. You must have the wrong house. Well, aren't you Mrs. Margaret Davis? That's right. And isn't this 295 Carroll Avenue? Right again. Well, I'm here to see about an ad in the paper concerning a room to rent. Well, thanks a lot. But I already have an ad in the paper about a room. But come back next week. Time, if it's ahead. not rented Slip by the then, spot. I'll use oh, your finish paper. Here. All right, everybody. <laughs> well, all right, but our ad rates are a lot cheaper than the paper you're you using now. What on? am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Davis, I'm, I'm here to try to rent your room. Town. Well, for goodness sake, no law, why didn't you say so? Instead of beating it? around the bush. No. <laughs> kind of I'm just windy, I guess. Well, a murder charge. I told you we're gamblers, Marshal. What did you what say you your name was? Brooks, inject? Constance Brooks. Your game I begin honest. teaching at Madison High School What's your next name, week. Anyway? I can give Rule you a letter of identification if you want. Oh, that will be necessary. My partner, I like your appearance. And although there are four or five other people interested in the room, yeah, I'll bet I want you to have it. Well, thank you. That ain't too now, the room and board is $20 a week. I'm that includes use of kitchen facilities, electricity... Well, uh, well, now, gentlemen, uh, let's move Davis, seven years have passed since then. Seven, seven years since we shared together. I can't believe it. Uh, it's been seven wonderful years, Connie. Um, I don't like to mention it, dear, but could you let me have ten dollars on the rent you owe? <laughs> From the week before last. Oh, certainly, Mrs. Davis. I have some money right here in my purse. Mm. There you are. Ten dollars. Oh, thank you, dear. One other thing, sir? See what an appeal to no, sentiment will do. Know, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. We got turned around. I was supposed to get ten dollars from you. Now, if that's the way, I'll answer it. Greetings and salutations. Come in, Walter. 
I'll go out to the hey, kitchen and get it for you myself. Sorry, I just warning the Is everything okay? Certainly, Walter. I'm just coming out of a sentimental mood. Well, there's nothing like sentiment, I always say. Especially if you've got ten dollars to throw around. Are you in straits again? Just about twenty dollars worth of straits, Walter. I'll get it somewhere. Have you given any thought to Mr. Conklin? Only when it's unavoidable. <laughs> oh, you mean as a source? No, I'm afraid he's the last person who'd lend me any money. Well, that's probably true as a rule, but I happen to see him this morning, and he's in an excellent mood. Really? He must have seen an accident somewhere. He might be worth a try at that. Well, if I'm going to talk to him I before school starts, we'd better get going, seat. Walter. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Now, now remember, Connie, you when you see Mr. Conklin, be sure well, to well, appeal well, to his well, sentimental well, side. Uh, All right, well, Mrs. Davis, I may have to turn him over a few times, but I'll find it. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss Kitty. Come in, come in, whoever you are. <laughs> Good morning, Why, Mr. Conklin. Well, if it isn't one Please of the most honored members of my no, faculty. Ms. Gans under Better put on your nice bifocals, place. sir. It's me. <laughs> well, of course it's you. Well, it's really Sit down, Miss Brooks. Yeah, what you mean, tell your principal how he can be of service to you. But the widow I hope the alarm doesn't go off and spoil this. You're in an excellent humor this morning, sir. And well, I might be. I've just learned that my salary night. raise has you been confirmed for the next year, pending my report to the state board, which in meets town. in Cedarville. You had any complaints about our most fortunate coincidence, Mr. Boynton is visiting his folks jail. there this weekend. We don't have he's to promised cheat. to deliver it for me. I they will have quite a pile on the Now, what do you want, Miss Brooke? We're done Mr. Boynton, what else? Great it. I wanted to speak to you about something else, sir. We've been together a long time, haven't we, Mr. Conklin? Over seven I'll years, Google Ms. Brooks. What you said Do you remember that first Michael. day we met? I saw him about an hour ago over on Bridge Street with Effie Gaines. It was early in the fall, and I remember I happened to be in a very fine humor that day. Thanks. It was a memorable day, all right. As I recall, I had just entered your office, and you got... Did I say something wrong? I don't know, Kitty. Uh, and you well, must be Miss Brooks. You did seem a little sore about that. to our English department. You know, That's me, Mr. Conklin. You was sweet-talking, Effie Gaines. Miss Brooks? She's a oh, are you teaching English, too? <laughs> <laughs> I meant that oh, I, sir. I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Conklin, well, and if I may, I'd like to shake your hand. Don't get up. I'll just reach across the desk. Very well, well, but please watch yes, that inkwell. I hope uh, Miss Brooks, that inkwell, Miss Brooks, but... Oh, I'm terribly sorry, oh. sir. It isn't too bad, though. Luckily, the ink won't show on your blue vest. <laughs> <laughs> was a gray vest. <laughs> Miss Brooks, it has long been a custom of mine to present to incoming teachers a brand new blackboard pointer for luck. Here's yours. Hello, Maury. <laughs> Use it well. Oh, I will, sir. Thank you. you My, it's I'm nice and quippy, isn't it? Well, been Watch one. where you're swinging Why, that, Miss Brooks. Look out, Miss Brooks. Look out. Who is? Look out. Mr. Conklin, what do you mean? forgive me. Who is? So That's the people. I've got another pair of glasses. All the clumsy, irresponsible actions. Oh, I'll make it up to you, sir. Honestly, I will. Now, perhaps I'd better be off to class. I agree heartily. There's nothing else in here you could use for target practice. someday we will. I apologize again, Mr. Conklin. I want you to know that as long as I'm teaching here at Madison, I'll make every effort to give this... And we got enough now, more than we ever had before. Let's go somewhere else and start a real business. how well I remember that hideous day when you first came to Madison. I guess I waxed sentimental over the wrong occasion. No, no, not at all. Your choice was an admirable one. You reminded me of something I'd forgotten for, lo, these many years. You know... You never did pay me for those glasses you broke that day. <laughs> so, uh, in the interest of sweet sentiment, just hand over ten dollars, please. But, sir, right I... Right now, Miss Brooks. Very well. Here you are, sir. Thank Honey, you. Uh, and now, just why did you come in here? To ask if gone, I could use Miss your Gans. phone for a moment. My phone? What oh. for? To tell a dear little old lady that if she has any more bright ideas, at? she should keep them to herself. You, Miss Gans. You're in love with Bill. Well, since I felt that an invitation from Mr. Boynton was well, necessary no, I, before I, I could visit his parents with idea. him, I decided he to did. try Mr. Davis's sentimental approach once more. 
Luckily, when I sat down with him at but lunch in the school cafeteria, well, Mr. Boynton uh, was in an extremely nostalgic well, mood. Well, you're, you're wrong. You know, I was thinking well, in my I, lab I, today I about the like things him. we've been through together. But the then, good times and bad, uh, uh, like and heartaches and happiness. Oh, it mean, certainly has been games. an experience. Uh, sometimes yeah. when I think well, about it, I wish Most it would never end. Don't like little Maybe men it like doesn't me have to, Mr. Boynton. Uh, of course it does, Miss Brooks. To, My frog McDougal can't live me. forever. <laughs> Your frog I don't know. If there Is wasn't that who no you were talking Grover? about? Well, sure. If there was only who one of think? us, I'm could you find it in yourself to leave here and go away and get married? Let's reminisce well, for a minute, shall now, we? Now, where'd you We've get such an idea We've been going together for that? quite some time, Mr. Boynton. I don't know Over what you're talking about. Over six years, Miss Brooks. Do you recall I don't that like first date we had together? Oh, indeed I do, Miss Brooks. I remember it as if it were yesterday. That's because we did the same things yesterday. (laughs) But that first night event, you drove me to Uh, Matt. Oh, afternoon, Doc. Here we are, Say, have you heard the talk? The very summit There's going to be another of those William I Tell drove acts up here late this view. afternoon. Well, I can't stop it, Doc. For the view, Mr. Uh, there's something else yeah. I can do. Look Mr. at all Bob those other parked the bank, cars. The I guess they have the same idea Tell. I have. At Sold least. her house for cash. <laughs> and she Look might have some more saved moon, up some. Mr. Boynton. Oh, Isn't it saying? lovely? Oh, it certainly is, Miss Brooks. Those two, uh... Romantic, too. Fleecing him. On a night like this, you'd you never believe it, it like was the a other completely way dead planet. A rattlesnake can be pretty to. if you see it. <laughs> 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 but it had been a very nice evening. Ask her if she's yeah, being fleeced. You think she'll thank you know, me for it? You know, I've well, wanted to ask you out since the face. first day yeah. we met two weeks right. ago. Well, why you didn't find you? Out some. You beat me to it. I did hint rather broadly, didn't I? But you seem so reserved. It's my nature, I guess. I'll probably get over it, though. Want to bet? <laughs> I'll bet Eagle Mountain is one of the highest points in this area. And one of the most fascinating. In fact, to cap the evening, I have a little surprise for you. A surprise? What kind? Hello, Miss Gans. I want to show you the finest specimen of eagle's here? nest you've ever I'll seen. just talk to you for a minute. <laughs> you like birds, mm-hmm. you'll really enjoy this, Miss Brooks. I'm listening. It's uh, a bit difficult to reach. But once we find it, <laughs> they have lots of big mouths in this town. I see you got your bag in that there. You uh, want to leave town? You might not believe this, but I've kept a souvenir of that little expedition oh, to I this just day. It might be. A souvenir? Yes, indeed. What? Pressed in the book, I oh, have you know the very band aid I used little when little that baby eagle scratched my game. hand. <laughs> hey, I'd forgotten all about that. That's you because it wasn't your you hand. You but it is nice to reminisce, isn't it, Mr. Boynton? Yes, it is. Oh, um, and not to change the subject, Now, you Brooks, listen to me, Marshall. I- I'm a little short a widow, this week, yes, and I was wondering I if you could lend me $10. <laughs> <laughs> I'd uh, like to get my parents a little now, anniversary present. Oh, oh, naturally. Oh, I have it right here in my purse. Me and wants me to there you are, no ten dollars. Of yours. Thanks a lot. Hi, Mr. Boynton. Hello, Miss Brooks. Sorry, Miss What are you doing up here on Eagle Mountain? Maybe you meant well. Oh, but pardon me. That was ten dollars ago. What is it, Walter? Oh, Mrs. Davis called and asked you to call her right back. You can use the phone booth over by the steam table. All right. Miss Boynton, could you lend me a dime, please? Dime? I'd get you in the mood, but I can't afford it. <laughs> Here you are, Miss Brooks. Thanks. I'll be getting back to my class now. You, me too. I'll see you later, Miss Brooks. I'm driving you, Mr. Boynton, to the airport, you know. Fine, Walter. Today came to see William Tell after all, huh, Marshal? Hello. That's oh, hello, right, Mrs. Robert. Davis. This is Connie. Can you see Connie, good from there, Marshal? Call me back in a yeah, few I minutes, please. See. I'm expecting an important phone uh, call from a Mrs. Right. Schindler. Mrs. Oh, Schindler? Murray? Who's she? I have the slightest idea. No. <laughs> but first. she's calling. What's the matter? Are you nervous because the of the lady on our party line? I'm not nervous. Are you? <laughs> 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 Put the bullet exactly where I'm I want. To to well, go ahead then. <laughs> Please, Dave, I've got to get back to class. I've gone out about ten paces, Mary. I called to find out if you tried the sentimental approach at school. I tried it twice, Mrs. Davis. How did it work out? Once more, and I'd oh, be walking around in a barrel. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Please remain quiet. Didn't Mr. Boynton invite you no along movement. for the weekend? Not quite, but since Walter's picking us up anyway, well, I could counts. just go along as if I'd had an invitation. Quiet, please. 
The trouble is, I haven't a dime to pay for the plane ticket. Then I don't see what you can do about it. No airline is going to let you travel for nothing. They only do that for children accompanied by their parents. No, that isn't any help. Wait a minute, Mrs. Davis. Is he dead? Not with a Tommy. bullet through the You're floor. Not yeah, what I he's think dead, Mark. Right. You know, I'm taking the am, Grandma. This is terrible. <laughs> terrible accident, No, it was an accident. Everybody here said it was an accident. You said yourself it didn't happen. Well, well as an adult, I, I certainly couldn't afford the plane fare to Cedarville. Oh, no. However, Look, when Mrs. Marshall, Davis mentioned that children really accompanied by their parents with, were permitted to travel free, it gave me an idea. All these witnesses I would try to go as a child. No. But as Walter and I drove no, I to the don't. airport with Mr. Boynton mm. that afternoon, I still hadn't divulged my plan to him. Oh, will boy, you let what a me great take day the body of my partner. You're Barry. right, Walter, but let's wait till we get to the airport to try it. All right, Please, go ahead. Miss Brooks, I'm not doing 40. I know you're not. You're doing 65. Now, slow down. Well, you'd better let him go, Miss Brooks. We haven't too Mr. much time. Jones, I swear I don't understand. Yeah, it was very nice of you to come down with me like this. Uh, what are you going, going to be doing over the weekend? Me? Well, I'm going I to Cedarville. Know. Cedarville? Well, well, that's where I'm going. Oh, how come you didn't mention yeah. it before? You I didn't, didn't figure it this way. Uh, how are you traveling? <laughs> Interstate Airlines. Well, what again? Well, that's I want a to be there a little more. Uh, where are you staying in Cedarville? That's another coincidence at your parents' house. If you recall, your mother asked me to come up for their anniversary celebration. Of course, I should have remembered. What could I have been thinking of when she asked you? Probably how to get out of it. <laughs> I mean, you were chatting with your dad. Of course, I haven't got my plane ticket yet. Uh, yeah. well, I haven't got the money. Closer. Excuse me for barging in, Miss Brooks, but how do you propose I to fly without a ticket? I have a little idea. <laughs> if you take a look as I open my overcoat, I think you'll get the drift. Uh, Miss Brooks. You're dressed like a child. Where'd you get that ruffled dress and that large pink bow? Same place I got the pigtails I'm going to tie on. From the dramatic club you. wardrobe at Did school. It go all right? You mean you're going to pass yourself so off as a 12-year-old child? As a 12-year-old child with stand dark, dark glasses, I got sitting on a valise with her legs tucked under. Oh, I get it, Miss Brooks. You think you can get past right, it for nothing if you're a kid it's going with her parents. Mom. Exactly, Walter. I had Miss Brooks, who's going to be I your parent? You, two was you want a so lollipop, Daddy? <laughs> Good as bad, all right. That don't matter. We'll go instead. Uh, I'd like to you confirm my reservation on the 430 plane to Cedarville. And there's more here. You take care of me? It's it's certainly, sir. Uh, may oh, I see This one was a real killer. Here you are. No, don't you touch me. You said you might could love me. Uh, well, you will. Uh, now, come on. I no, understand I no. can take my daughter. All right, that's enough, Maury. Oh, of course, Mr. Marshall. You provided she's you, you heard what he uh, May I see your plea? I heard what you were planning to do. Right here, Thomas sitting on my baggage. Oh. Not to be my business after hey, all, did it? Step aside, madam, and let me see the child. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't. Yes, I would. I'm she's her. coming with me. No, no, no. no. You're 12 years Let go old. of her, Maury. You lolly can't lolly. stop us, Marshal. Hey, you know how I can shoot. You You've seen me. Me. Don't me. Don't try me, Maury, even with a woman to shield you. Why not? Just her birthday in October. Right here, Mr. Delnack, you me. <laughs> you drop your gun. Look, I've heard of women fibbing you about... You call that fair? This is no game, Mr. Now drop it. Believe me, sir, she's only 12. And I ought to know. I'm her boyfriend. Really? Well, one of you is robbing the cradle. <laughs> that is, she seems so, so mature for 12. Uh, uh, I don't want to prize her, but how do you account for the fact that this little girl looks nearly as old as you do? Daddy's married to a much older woman. Uh, yes. Uh, look, the plane leaves in a few minutes. Are you going to let her through on my ticket? Well, there's no time to dig up her birth certificate, I suppose. And if you say she's your 12-year-old daughter, I guess I'll just oh, have to... Oh, goodness, I got here on time. Mr. Uh, Conklin! Yes, uh, pardon me, little girl. I have an important report to give this gentleman. Uh, here you are, Boynton. If you'll just deliver this to the board, as you said you would, I'll be forever... Pardon me, little girl! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Grandpa, aren't you a little late for tweak or tweet? <laughs> uh, do you know this little girl, sir? This little girl happens to be... Now, if this were suspense, a shot would ring out and Mr. Conklin would topple over. <laughs> Please, all I want to know is whether or not she's a 12-year-old child. A 12-year-old child? 
She's a high school English teacher. A high school teacher? Well, shame on you telling me you were 12 years old. It's possible. We have some pretty backward students where I teach. <laughs> well, this beats everything. I never thought anyone would go to such lengths just to travel half fair. Half fair? You mean children accompanied by their parents don't travel for nothing? Well, certainly not. On the family flight plan, only wives are permitted to fly with their husbands for nothing. I told you that was the rule, but you wouldn't believe me, would you, darling? Darling? <laughs> Darling, <laughs> what's going on now? Well, you see, sir, my husband didn't know the rules, and since it's very important that I make this trip with him, I had to resort to desperate measures. Now, I see. Are you sure you're his wife? Well, darling, are we sure? Well, that's right, Miss Brooks. Miss Brooks! <laughs> Now, what in heaven's name, Denton, why are you pulling on my lapel? Let's let go, you nasty little boy. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, y yes, sir, we're, we're, we're married all right, sir. There's no question of that. <laughs> We've been married for quite some time. Uh, of course we have. Come here, Filthy, and give your wife a great big kiss. <laughs> kiss? Oh, uh, uh, of course, dear. There. Now kiss the other hand. <laughs> I'm not going to be fooled a second time. Just how long have you two been married? Fifteen Ten years. years. <laughs> he's been so happy, he's lost all track of time. <laughs> I'm sorry, lady, but your word isn't enough. You'll have to prove that you're husband and wife. Prove it? Exactly. I want to see visible proof. Visible proof? Bon voyage, mommy and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Au revoir, my boy. Oh, no. You mean this is your son? It would certainly explain my feelings for them both. I'd just like to say that I'm... Oh, isn't that cute? Walter's playing hide the handkerchief in Grandpa's mouth. <laughs> now, of course, you're going to let me go through on my husband's ticket. Well, the plane's about to start, and there isn't time to check further, so I'll have to, I guess. But I'll tell you one thing. If you're not man and wife, I'm in a lot of trouble. Believe me, I know exactly how you feel. You do? Yes, I've been in the same kind of trouble for over six years. <laughs> And now here's the star of our show, Eve Arden. Well, love on the wing can be an awful headache, especially when you fly without a ticket. <laughs> Brooks, starring Eve Arden, Frank Scribe, is produced and directed by Larry Burns, written by Arthur Allsberg and Al Lewis, with the music of Lud Gluskin. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Next week, at this same time and over this same station, Eve Arden, in the role of Madison High School's favorite English teacher, Miss Brooks, will again call the student body together. Don't you be absent. Our Miss Brooks is presented each week through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.